We are so happy you are with us. Uh, there is anxiety everywhere. <laughs> it's and always about something. <laughs> people who have OCD and have been washing their hands compulsively are now going, I told you so, I told you so. Well, and the conspiracy theorists are going, I told you so, I told you so. Everybody's got a theory. Well, it's not a conspiracy that... Yeah, one would think not. We're going to talk about coronavirus yeah. this week. And I know it's on the top of everybody's mind. And it's something that's important from a neuroscience yeah. perspective. And so stay with us. We are going to talk about how to strengthen your immune system in the middle of a lot of anxiety for people. But first, you have a testimonial to read. From Sabrina. Um, she says, just wanted to say thank you for sharing your knowledge on brain health. I'm 27 and going through PDD as well as fighting with my husband often. Since I've discovered your videos, podcast, and book, Feel Better Fast and Make It Last, I've been using your techniques to improve my mind. Your recommendation to listen to mood-enhancing songs like Claire de Lune have saved my husband and I from fighting in front of our baby. Thank you and God bless. I love that. Isn't that great? That just made me yeah. so happy. And when you're happier and you're listening to music like that, um, your immune system is better. And being panicked uh, actually hurts your immune system. So, um, so we're going to talk about COVID-19. So coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illness um, that we've known about for a long time, from the common cold to more severe diseases like Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS, now, a novel coronavirus is a new strain that has not previously been identified in humans. Coronaviruses are zoonotic, meaning they are transmitted between animals and people. Detailed investigations found that SARS was transmitted from civet cats to humans and MERS from dromedary camels to humans. Wow. Common signs of infection include respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and breathing difficulties. In more severe cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and even death. Although what's interesting about COVID-19 is it's not seeming to affect children as much. as much. And they think it might and, be the MMR, right? Um, I'm not sure. That's what I've heard. And that uh, the elderly, don't look at me like that, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm right are, behind you. are more vulnerable. Yeah. Standard recommendations to prevent inspection, uh, infection spread include regular hand washing. We're going to talk about that. Covering your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing. Of course you should do that. Um, thoroughly cooking meat and eggs, avoiding close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illnesses such as coughing and sneezing. So um, as some of you know, we basically adopted our two nieces and right after this happened, there was a rumor, turned out not to be true, yeah. that several children from China were coming new to their school. And all of a sudden, none of the children so, showed up. Yeah, and so there was panic and, and my niece came home and she's like, oh, I, I can't go to school, nobody's going to school. There were four kids in class and, and there were parents, literally there were parents protesting outside the school and there was a news van outside the school. And, you know, she's like, do what, can I stay home tomorrow? And I said, let me do some research. So, and then she didn't understand why I didn't just say, yes, you can stay home. She didn't understand. And so I said, because here's the thing. I, we don't buy into mass hysteria, number one. We're not going to buy into mass hysteria um, because the masses are often the, 
you can fill in the blank. Um, so we don't, I, I was trying to teach her, we think for ourselves. We, I want you to think for yourself and not like everybody else, number one. Just because there are people outside protesting does not make them right. So, so let me so, actually, so when I was in my philosophy class at a Christian college at Vanguard University, my philosophy teacher said the masses are the asses. Right. And it's like, what does that mean? It means, and we talk about it in the Brain Warriors right. Way sheep, sheep, dogs, podcast. and wolves. Sheep, sheep, dogs, and wolves. What does sheep do? They follow. And they don't think. The herd, they don't think. They're vulnerable. But if a sheep gets blown off a cliff, as happened in Turkey, the other sheep, Often may Walk just off the cliff. jump after. Right. So when when we say the masses or the asses, we don't want to demean anybody. No, it just but, means we want you but to. But mass think. hysteria is often not helpful. Now, of course, we want you to be thoughtful. If you're sick, don't go to work. So so as I was telling her about this, I said, you know, it's not that I I always want you to be safe, and I'm going to do my homework on this. I'm going to figure out. What what is going on? But I don't want you to just all of a sudden think that just because there are people there protesting, like that doesn't make them right all of a sudden. Okay, I want I want you to slow down for a minute and let's do the research. And so we did this together. And so I said, I want you to think about something. For a child to come here from China means they've had to go through um, quarantine. It means they've, they've gone through quarantine. They've had to go through this process. It means they're being watched, number one. Um, but what turned out was it turned out that the some of the moms that heard that this was happening didn't like the quarantine process. They wanted it doubled. Okay. Well, I could understand why they're fearful, but that doesn't make it right. And, it, and what I was concerned about, and I told her, I said, I want you to think about this. You don't get to just make decisions like that and then get everyone upset. There's a quarantine process for a reason. I understand their fear. It's their choice if they want to keep their kids home. But what I want you to think about Think about that child that's coming there. And what I want you to think about is how they've already had to go through this quarantine process. They're moving from another country. And now all of a sudden, think about all the kids that are being bullied simply because they are from, from another country. And maybe they're even American, but they live here. But they're, they're another nationality. And they're now being bullied because of this. And that's what I don't want her to buy into. So it's like, I want you to start thinking for yourself and not thinking like everybody else. So we did a little research and I'm like, no, you're going to school. <laughs> so there's no coronavirus that's been detected, um, you know, and there was no reason for her to stay home. So if anything, we knew that that child had been quarantined. So that was probably safer then. And, and part of the problem is when you get your information from the news, as we've talked about, and I talk about in my new book, The End of Mental Illness, is the news leads with the worst thing because your brain is programmed to pay attention to what's negative, to what's awful, to what's terrible, to what's scary, to what's traumatic. And so as we record this, there's been 26 deaths in the United States. Um, and, and I would never want to diminish that in any no. way. But we want you to be careful. Multiples of that for the flu. Well, and, and and taking care of your immune system is really important. But being angry, upset, not sleeping is in fact damaging your immune system and your ability to fight whatever infection comes your right. way. Right, and and it's interesting because one of the things you know. That, that we would tell you is probably don't travel unless you have to, right? If it's if, Unless it's a mandatory thing. But I do that anyways. So when he travels and he wants me to go with him, I'm like, I weigh it out because I tend to have a weaker immune system than he does just because of all of my health issues from the past. I take really good care of myself. I do everything I can to keep my, to build up my immune system. But when I travel a lot, I, it, I tend to weaken it and I tend to get sick faster than he does. So I'll weigh it out anyways. It's like, you're going to be on the go. You're going to be in three states in, you know, five days. That's probably not a good move for me. And I'll, no, I don't need to do it. I'm not going to go. So I do that anyway. Because you are more vulnerable. I'm more vulnerable. And, uh, and, and so you've heard me talk on this podcast, Russ, talk on this podcast about the app Think Dirty. 
um, where you can actually scan your personal products and it'll tell you on a scale of one to 10 how quickly they're killing you. Well, now we find, um, and, and my new book has just been released, and so I'm traveling a lot to do television and uh, radio, and um, I have a new public television. So I'm traveling a lot, which means I have to wash my hands a lot. But you don't know what is in the disinfectants, what's in the soap. Is it good for you or not? And so... I find I get healthy disinfectant and I take it with me. So Well, we've never been a big fan of using overusing disinfectants in a normal situation. This isn't a normal situation, right? This is this is crucial that you try to protect yourself. So we're not in a normal situation right now. So using a disinfectant in this circumstance is not normal. And by the way, I always you always said, I hope I never have to say thank you for my prepping, but say it. You can say it. <laughs> you can say it. My wife is a prepper. Yes. It's true. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> because I have water and toilet paper, and so you can say. Her frontal lobes work hard. Yes. We'll just say her frontal lobes work hard. So when we come back, we are going to talk about how to strengthen your immune system to not only fight off the coronavirus, but also things like cancer. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are talking about coronavirus, um, how you can protect yourself, what you can do. And today we're going to talk about how you can boost your immune system. So. But before we do, um, I want to read a testimonial. We love when we do. you leave reviews, uh, even ones when say you don't like us, because it helps us bring you the content that you want. To this podcast has been growing like crazy and yeah, we're grateful really crazy. for that. Um, so when you leave a review, um, we enter you into drawing for a free book for Tana's cookbooks. I suppose I should be signing the end of mental illness now and let them have a free drawing for that yeah. as well. So leave your preference on which book you want. Yeah. Um, from Melissa, wait, you had cancer three times. Why... Don't people know who you are? Thank you <laughs> for sharing your knowledge. You and Dr. Tell Amen. Them. So they're talking about Tana. You and Tana and Dr. Amen are so underrated. The whole world should know this couple. As so a household please tell them. We are name. looking, we are hoping that you will share this information, share the podcast. And if you would, um, please post on social media um, or on our website, um, three questions, or not three questions, on our social media sites, a question um, about what you are fearful of about coronavirus or something that you've learned about it. Um, any question you have really, how to boost your immune system, a question you have or something you've learned that you wanna share, but post something, what's on your mind? And we would love to hear more about it and we love to talk about it. We'll answer it during our question and answer section. So, okay. So coronavirus, uh, again, a common group of viruses that can cause infection in your nose, sinuses, throat. Some are mild and simply produce symptoms like the common cold, runny nose, sore throat, fever. Other types, as we talked about, are more severe. You may remember SARS or MERS um, that killed hundreds of people. In early 2020, the World Health Organization identif identified a deadly new strain of the virus, the 2019 novel coronavirus or COVID-19, um, also referred to as the Wuhan, where it started coronavirus. Um, so to date, um, it has infected, I think now, and by the time this airs, it'll be more 120,000 people worldwide. And there's been over 3,000 deaths. China 
Italy, Iran mm. have been hit particularly hard. Um, it's transmitted from human to human and symptoms appear within a couple of days up to 14 days from the time of exposure. Um, the symptoms, uh, cold-like symptoms, shortness of breath, that seems to be one of the hallmarks of it, cough and fever. Most people, it's mild symptoms and then they recover. It's when your immune system is compromised right. that people can have the most problems. And it's one of the reasons every day I take 7,000 units of vitamin D. Me too. Because vitamin D helps to support your immune system. Um, so too. there are three big strategies I want to to talk about, and then we have a lot of sort of sub-strategies. But during um, a global epidemic like this, you want to shore up your immune system, one, lower your stress. Yep. Freaking out about a pandemic raises stress, which actually hurts your immune system, making you more vulnerable to infections. Techniques that we talk about, such as diaphragmatic breathing, prayer, meditation, listening to calming music, warming your hands, hypnosis, guided imagery, all can be helpful. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so having a strategy for stress, and I think when, um, especially for people who travel a lot for work, I would also throw in there, think about which trips you might be able to cancel. Sometimes you can't cancel your trips, right? But that stresses people out because when you're traveling a lot, it automatically in, like increases your, your stress load. Um, but canceling trips that you might, you canceled one um, because it just wasn't a necessary trip. You have trips that are necessary. So canceling the ones that are not necessary will decrease your stress load as well. Because when you travel, it also affects your sleep and that will increase your stress load. So I think that's really important. So working on your stress, eat foods that boost the immune system, foods that are n a natural immunity booster, including onions, mushrooms, garlic, shiitake, white button, portobello mushrooms, yeah. garlic. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking of a stir fry. <laughs> you can also take aged garlic like as a supplement. Some people just don't like garlic. Um, or they just can't handle that much garlic. So um, taking an aged garlic supplement can be helpful. Um, vitamin C rich foods, oranges, berries, peppers, dark leafy greens. Um, so now again, I'm thinking of the stir fry, maybe coconut oil or avocado oil, peppers, dark leafy vegetables, that mushrooms, like onions, smoothie. garlic. No, the garlic does no, not no, no, sound no, no. like but a the, smoothie. The green leafy vegetables and some berries. And, yeah. yeah. Vitamin D rich foods, fatty fish. Um, so put some salmon in there, eggs, tuna, zinc rich foods, oysters, beef, lamb, spinach, asparagus, sesame, and pumpkin seeds. And selenium rich foods like Brazil nuts, seeds, grass fed meats. So, I mean, I'm just thinking this. You have a smoothie for breakfast, an immune boosting smoothie, and so that was my a stir breakfast. fry. So that for was my lunch day yesterday. So yesterday we had I had a smoothie for breakfast, just like we talked about, with some berries and some greens in it. And then for I was so busy for lunch, I didn't have time to make much for lunch. So I threw together a little wild salmon, a can of wild salmon that comes from Vital Choice without it has no BPA in it and whatever, um, and threw it on a curry coconut wrap. Oh, so. Um, but just so simple. And the curry in it is so, so good for you. So yeah, Pure Wraps makes these amazing curry coconut wraps. And stay tuned. Brain MD is going to come out with a greens uh, product that is spectacular, that we have been working on sourcing it. It's organic. It's loaded with immune boosting nutrients mm -hmm. coming soon. Um, so we talked about lowering stress foods that boost your immune system, and nutraceuticals that boost immunity to stave off infections. So we've already referred to some of them, mm -hmm. omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, um, 
only about 25% of the population has healthy vitamin D levels. We want you to get yours checked and optimized. Work with an integrative practitioner to determine other supplements, but those that enhance immunity, you mentioned aged garlic, therapeutic mushrooms, anthocyanins. Um, these are extracts from it's fruits. It's also good for your eyes. Uh, um, so one thing that I want to talk about, though, is that people often, like, they start to get sick and they start all of these supplements. That's not really the best way to do it. So you really want to, like, it's like you can't, like, start to get sick and then start taking vitamin C. Vitamin C doesn't really help get rid of a cold. It helps prevent a cold. It helps boost your immune system. What we're talking about is helping you stay healthy. So there's a great analogy about rats in the street, right? So it's like if you put trash in the street, the rats come out. Well, it's, it's like, were the rats always there or did the trash bring them out? Does that make sense? So you want to make sure you're like always boosting your immune system so the rats don't come out because the rats are always going to be around you, but you don't want you don't want them to attract them by keeping your immune system boosted all the time. You prevent that ability for them to actually be able to live and survive. So that's what we were trying to do. So one thing that I want to talk about is- So you want to do this before, before you're sick? Before, yes. Rather than- You don't wait until you get sick. So one of the things that that, that so we're not touching on- excited about this. Yes, because I've been sick. <laughs> so, I'm so, so excited about this. One thing that you need to th be thinking about is not just the things that like go after like immunity in the moment. You want to be thinking inflammation. You gotta be decreasing inflammation like all the time because anytime your system, you've got inflammation going on, you are more likely to get sick. So you've gotta be thinking things like what we talk about all the time, healing your gut all the time, fish oil all the time. So well, we haven't talked about gut, but gut is so important it, keeping you well. 60% of your immune tissue is in your gut. Yes. So probiotics can be really helpful, but it's keeping your gut All bugs the time. happy. Yes. And so fish oil, so that you keep that immune, that that immune, not the immune, the um, inflammation down. Um, so you want to be working on your, not just the immune enhancing supplements, but the inflammation and like decreasing supplements. Well, basically all of the bright, and your gut. bright minds risk factors yes. are Thank you. good to strengthen your brain. All the time. And keep you healthy. So... Be smart. Don't travel when you don't have to. If you're sick, Sleep. work from home if you can. Uh, protect yourself. Get rid of the automatic negative thoughts. Watch the news once for like a half an hour. Uh, and that's it. Turn it off. Otherwise, it's going to damage your immune system. Comedies. We just saw Meet the Parents again. It's hysterical. Um <laughs> We hope this is helpful to you. Stay with us. We're going to talk about Brain in the News next. And make sure you leave us your comments. Um, you can go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com, leave us questions, comments, and we would love to get back to you. And you can also tag us on social media. Um, and I know I love to go into my social media and see what people are saying. So, And when you leave a review, we'll enter you into a raffle to um, win one of Tana's... Tana's cookbook, Brain Warrior's Way cookbook, or The End of Mental Illness. You let us know which one you'd want. Welcome back. We are so grateful you are here. Uh, in this podcast, we're going to talk about brain in the news. I mean, we've been talking about coronavirus. That's clearly in the news and will be in the news. Uh, but first, uh, let me read a review from Lewis. Thank you for connecting the gut to the brain. Didn't we just We talk just did that again. <laughs> and enhancing how all other pieces of our lives are connected also electronics, stress, scripture, exercise, friendships. You have found a niche in my life, and Aww. I am so grateful. That's so awesome. Well, we are grateful, Lewis, to you. Um, if you leave a review or a comment or a question, we'll enter you into a raffle to win uh, a signed copy of either um, Tana's cookbook, The Brain Warrior's Way Cookbook, or my new book, The End of Mental Illness. Uh, 
So brain in the news. Um, so coronavirus is in the news, mm -hmm. uh, no question. But it's not the top news story. It's uh, there's a new docu series out with Bill and uh, Hillary Clinton called Hillary, and when he said he had his affair with Monica Lewinsky, he did it to manage his anxieties. Uh, and in the doc, he said that he had oral sex with Monica to ease pressures of the job. Um, and he feels terrible. The scandal defined her life and confessing to Chelsea was the absolute worst. Um, you ever thought about this? <laughs> If what? I if I said I had an affair to manage my anxiety, what do you think? I'm not thinking it'd go very well. Do you think your anxiety would be decreased by having an affair? Um, actually, I don't. So, what are other? You don't ways? even know the definition of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I, I do. Have you ever had your skin peeled off your body? <laughs> that would I mean, be. See, just so everybody yes, knows. Just so everybody I'm, knows. If I'm dead, yes. I didn't do it. But he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> so, seriously, what did you. Seriously. What did you <laughs> so, think when you heard that? It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. If you cannot, I'm just going to be honest. If you, I don't care what your politics are. If you cannot control yourself in the Oval Office, what are you doing being the president of the United States? It's not a good excuse. Figure out a way outside the Oval Office to manage your life. That is not a good excuse. That was a cop-out. And it's not going to work. So just FYI. Well, you know I love you. I do know I do know you love He might love Hillary. It still isn't going to work. So No, I'm not going to use it as an excuse. No, I know you're not. There's not a good excuse to hurt deeply. Someone you can yeah, about. that was just a cop out. That was a power. And that was a power over thing. It's um, nothing more. Often associated with very low frontal lobe. Yeah, that was an ego power because over thing. What I often tell my patients over and over, we talk about these two words. Then what? If I do this, then what happens? If I say this, then what happens? At least if with I me. This, then at what least happens? with me, you know what happens. Well, because then because you're. Constantly reminding me. Yes. Of, <laughs> you are constantly <laughs> supervising my frontal lobes. And even though we play a lot on, on the podcast, um, you know, we actually have a great relationship in large part, I think, because we do trust each other. And trust comes from consistent behavior over time. But th there are way better ways, as Tana mentioned, to manage your anxiety from diaphragmatic breathing to writing down your negative thoughts to listening to music to exercise. Um, it's so important. And, you know, I basically spent my whole book, Feel Better Fast and Make It Last, talking about ways to feel better now and later versus, you know, what happened with Clinton is now, but clearly not later because it's one of the things that defined, mm -hmm. you know, his marriage, his relationship with his child and his presidency. Um, so learning how to manage your anxiety in healthy ways is just a critical human skill. I mean, we all have anxiety and, you know, now in the time of Corona virus and divisive politics, uh, it, it clearly is up. Uh, Bebe, I actually don't know how to say this, Bebe Rexa um, talks about living with bipolar disorder for mm -hmm. the first time. I decided to open up and free myself. And that's happening more and more mm -hmm. with celebrities. Yeah. That, you know, I'm in the new docuseries with Justin Bieber that he And it's really up. nice when they do that because it really makes it, somehow it makes it safer and okay for the, their fran their fans to, um, it normalizes it somehow, so. Well, I'm gonna be on the Mel Robbins show this week and uh, we scanned her mm -hmm. and we're gonna talk about 
the scan, and she has all sorts of reasons for the scan that she had, including a bad car accident when she was mm. 19 and had amnesia after the accident. Uh, she was hit by a car, actually. So um, there's another article that came out, think all BPA-free products are safe, not so fast, scientists mm, warn. Interesting. So um, that, that was really interesting. Let me go to the article. Um, not so fast. Um, this was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And so for decades, scientists have studied BPA extensively and found it's associated with all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. And it's found in plastics and in a lot of cans. Uh, plays a role in early pregnancy loss, placental um, diseases, negative health effects after birth. And so there are a lot of companies that came up with BPA-free mm -hmm. um, products, um, but they replaced it with BPS, uh, bisphenol S, and what they found is the replacement is still not safe. Oh, that interesting. It's been associated, uh, that it's been found to go through the mother's placenta. Wow. Um, in mice, they found that it can cause health problems as well. And so what do you do? So I have a question. And well, well, let me just go back to what do you do is you think of glass containers as better. And you certainly don't microwave things in plastic. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But why is it that in Europe, the FDA, <clears throat> the way their FDA works is products have to be found to be safe before they are approved. And with our system, they have to be found to be harmful before they will make them ban them. Ban them. Yeah, and that really that. seems backwards. It does. Uh, but when possible, it's not possible to get rid of all the plastics in your life, but work and store things in glass containers. Yeah, no, it's hard when you're traveling and stuff like that. But Then in plastic containers. Um, there's another news feature, UPS worker... Um, planned a mass shooting Ooh. and had 20,000 rounds of ammo Ooh. and weapons. So police found tactical backpacks with ammunition staged at the suspect's California apartment. Um, he was a UPS worker. Authorities searched his home. Um, and Thomas Andrews, 32, was arrested on suspicion of a evading police, driving under the influence, and several weapons violations. And the reason we're bringing this up, because this is a story that happens over and over again, that people who worked with him noticed that something wasn't right, and they reported him to the authorities. So when you notice things aren't right, when people are talking about violence, when um, the behavior is off, um, it's so hard because often you'll report nothing happens. Right. But in well, or this people case, don't want to. People are so afraid to say anything because they're like, "Well, I didn't want to be mean. I didn't want to snitch. I didn't want to like." They like don't want to hurt someone because they don't want to be wrong. But you tend to know in your gut when something is wrong. I always tell our girls. Like my, the, our two nieces and our daughter, it's like, listen to your gut. Apologize later if you're wrong. I mean, don't, you know, pay attention, think for yourself. Like, don't be that sheep person who we talked about before. Don't be a sheep. Don't follow everybody else because that's just as bad. Don't just follow a crowd just because. Think for yourself. But thinking for yourself means standing up and going, I might be wrong on this, but I, I my gut is telling me that this isn't right. And I'm going to be the one that says something, even if it's uncomfortable for me. And sometimes you can report it anonymously to the HR person at work um, or even to the legal authorities. Mm -hmm. um, better to say something than not to say something. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's the point of that story. 
Um, you know, I mentioned um, divisive politics. Mm -hmm. And during the time of a crisis is not the time to have divisive politics. It's so not. Politics. I don't it's even turn the, the news on. to come together as much as you can. And, you know, you think about what's going on in the country and how it's not helpful. But when there is a crisis at home, the more you can come together, yeah. forgive each other, really help with the communication, the better it, it is. Um, one more study that just came out this morning. We have a brand new product at BrainMD called Happy Saffron. And saffron has so many scientifically validated benefits from mood and memory and sexual function. It's been shown to help with PMS and mm -hmm. there are a group of studies on eye health. Well, there's a brand new study that just came out on waist circumference oh, and blood sugar metabolism. And so happy saffron. So I've been taking three of them a day because I'm like, with all this benefit, I mean, I'm not depressed. I'm generally pretty happy, but I like that it's going to support my eyes and my blood sugar, which can be high if I don't pay attention to it. And so um, this uh, group of researchers uh, from Iran, and a lot of the studies on saffron actually come because they grow a lot of it in the world, and uh, they did a comprehensive, systematic review of all of the studies um, looking at weight and blood sugar. And they found nine articles containing 595 people. And their study found waist circumference was significantly reduced and fasting um, blood sugar was reduced following the saffron intervention. Interesting. And I'm like, how much? give me some of that. Yeah, that's interesting. And so the studies, it's about 30 milligrams, which is in our new happy saffron. Why I have a separate, well, it's not just saffron, but it has the dosages used in a number of the studies um, that was found to be helpful for teenage um, mood issues, significant improvement, and in the elderly, mood issues, significant improvement. So is it improvement. decreasing inflammation also? Well, we don't know, but in our Happy Saffron product, there's the therapeutic dose of saffron plus 400 milligrams of curcumins, which decreases inflammation, and zinc, which actually helps them work better. Mm, interesting. And so I'm pretty excited. I don't think we've actually formally launched Happy Saffron, but it's coming um, soon, and I have it, and I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, Brain in the News, thank you for listening to us. Um, if you like this podcast, please post it on any of your social media points. I mean, just one thing you learned today, maybe Saffron uh, can make you happy. Um and post it on any of your social media sites, tag us, leave a question, a review, a comment at Brain Warriors Way Podcast, uh, dot com, and we'll enter you into a raffle to win either a copy of Tana's cookbook, The Brain Warriors Way Cookbook, or a copy of my new book, The End of Mental Illness. Stay with us. We're going to answer your questions next. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we are so grateful that you are listening. Um, this podcast has now been downloaded just about 7 million times. I know, it's times. so cool. And we are grateful. Um, pay attention and try to learn one new thing. Yeah. And then post it on any of your social and media sites. We'll be yeah. so grateful. And then leave us a question, a comment, or a review, and we'll enter you into a raffle to win either one of our um, books, The Brain Warriors Way Cookbook or The End of But go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com and, and let us know um, your question or your comment. And do you have some reviews to read? I do. From Amanda... 
Um, I was absolutely shocked at the percentage rates, especially with suicide. That's amazing how food can affect suicide and reduce it by eating the right types of food. By the way, I'm loving how Dr. Raymond is changing the stigma by rewording mental illness into brain health. Love that. And then another one from Reg Guy 44 I'm learning how to use my frontal cortex. These videos really help. Our family is fixing our thinking and not letting emotions control our decisions and actions. Only when appropriate. Accountability. I love, love accountability. Of those. Yes, that's great. Send them a book. Fun. I am grateful. Okay. So in this podcast, we are going to answer your questions. And I want you to help me with this. The first one is, can I stabilize my mental illness simply with medication alone? Well, one, you know I hate the term mental illness mm -hmm. because it's stigmatizing, it's inaccurate. And these are brain health issues that steal your mind. And I'm just not a fan of medication is the first and only thing you do. Um, because it's giving control to a substance without you having to do anything. And uh, sometimes medication saves people's lives, right. right? I mean, you take thyroid, and that's really critical to I'm you. I'm not getting out of it. <laughs> but, but you also do the other things to keep your thyroid gland Healthy. Well, and, and I do the other things to prevent cancer from coming back. And I do the other things to prevent depression come, from coming back. And I know what it's like to go through that scary, dark thing. Um, I know, you know, the things that go bump in the night. So why would I want to go back to that? So I do what I can on my side to prevent it. And that's why... Well, this and there's another question here. Does exercise help control bipolar disorder? So many people who really have bipolar disorder, we actually did a blog on how I think bipolar is the fad um, diagnosis of 2020. Um, ADD in adults was the fad diagnosis of 2000. Um, I mean, there's always a fad diagnosis. I think a lot of people diagnosed with bipolar disorder really have the chronic effects of traumatic brain injury. And that mood instability, irritability, temper problems, not bipolar, it's they damage their temporal lobes. But exercise virtually helps everything. Exercise helps ADD, it helps depression, it helps anxiety. Um, I, is there one thing it really doesn't help? No, for me, I mean, it helps mood for me. And I mean, you know how I get, if I'm not exercising, I just get a little agitated. But part of that is that fear for me because I know what it's like to be depressed. And it's like, I'm so anxious about going backwards. And it's been 25, 27 years now. But I just, there's always in the back of my mind, like if I, if I don't do this, I'm going to go backwards. And so I'm just always like on top of it. So, so you do it because you love yourself. And it feels and good when I do it. And you love your husband and you love your family yeah. and you, yeah. And I feel good when I do it. Um, the next question, I have a really hard time making a routine for myself. How does someone with a mental illness, um, make a routine for themselves. So I'm going to push, I mean, you, you're going to, you're going to have the medical term for that, but from a coaching perspective, I'm going to, I'm going to push on that a little bit because I would say, just like when people say they don't have, they're not motivated. I would say you are motivated. You're motivated to do something. Even if it's sit on the couch and eat hot Cheetos, you're motivated to do something. So my question is, you have a routine. The question is, what is your routine? Is your routine sporadic? Is it chaotic? Is it that you is it your is it that you do have a routine, but your routine isn't what you want? Because um, you do have a routine. So once you identify what your routine is, now we can begin to like alter it, right? You do have a routine. Well, so, and it starts. I, I really like that because you know people are eating crappy food or they're not exercising. That's their routine. That is their routine, and often. It just starts with changing one thing, like walking like you're late. Right. Or starting the day with small, today is going small. to be a great day or ending the day with what went well today. Or just getting your shoes and putting them out, your walking shoes, knowing that you're more likely to go walking if you take your shoes out. So for, so for some people, 
some people like me are more like, I need to jump the canyon. I need, I need to like, I need massive change all at once. Like they're like me and they want to do it all at once. Um, and if they don't do it all at once, they feel like it wasn't a big enough shift. Okay. But there are, that's like a small percentage, I think of people who are making changes. I think most people are probably, I, that was a hard for me thing for me to learn when I was coaching. I'm like, just do it, just do it all. Like it was hard for me to sort of get why people weren't doing it all. Um, but I started to learn. Did anybody ever call you in Intense, terms? yeah. Uh, so I started to learn that most people learn differently. And if you're gonna help people change, you have to, you have to learn how they learn and, and begin to understand how people learn. And most people learn in small steps, not tiny habits. That really struck me when we worked with people um, from Stanford on the Tiny Habits Project. So sometimes you got to chunk it down so small and that is what works. So it really doesn't matter if you cross the canyon in one leap or if you cross the canyon by walking down one side and up the other side. It really doesn't matter as long as you get to the other side, right? So if you are a person who does it in tiny, tiny steps, that's okay. Just take that first tiny step. And I would suggest mastering that one tiny thing for a week before you pick the next thing. Pick something that you know you will do. Even if it is, get your tennis shoes out and set them by the front door. Even if it's that small and you have to look at them every single day. Put your tennis shoes by the front door and put a, put a little sticky note on your front door, I will walk. <laughs> like do that every you know every day for a week. And then the next day, you know, the next week, yeah, because if people start to do one thing, they will start to do another thing. Do two things, right? And if you do two, you're probably going to do four. And it starts with, "Is this good for my brain or bad for it?" Right. It just starts. With or maybe that you just drink question. one glass of water. That we extra. talk about all the time mm -hmm. because once you start, you begin to feel better. What did you used to say? Give me two weeks. Just give me two weeks. Just give me two weeks. It's not because you're only going to do it for two weeks. It's because in two weeks people begin to feel so much better. Their pain goes down. They sleep better. Everything begins to shift and then they get it. And then they start to, they want to do it. How does someone acquire borderline personality disorder? I would love to know that actually. <coughs> so borderline personality disorder, people who have pretty severe mood instability, irritability. They tend to overvalue people. Oh, Dr. Eamon, you're the best doctor that ever lived. And then whenever someone says that, I'm like, uh oh. What's coming next? Because three weeks later, it's like, you are the worst doctor. But don't they also lived. lie a lot? Um, they Traditionally. can. And they can be involved in- Pretty extreme um, behavior. Extreme behavior, extreme sexual, sexual behavior. behavior. Yeah. Um, temper problems. Yeah, I've had someone in my life that just, they, they can be tough to deal with. The causes, um, sometimes it's early abandonment causes. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a head injury. Sometimes it's because they had toxic exposure. Sometimes they had a brain infection. And clearly something is the matter with their Brain. So, so it's mean, not always like have, a bonding. We have treated hundreds of people with borderline personality disorder here, and they don't all have the same brain, but typically they have low frontal lobe activity, it's the impulsivity, low activity often in their left temporal lobe, dark, evil, awful thoughts, mood instability, irritability, temper problems. And their cingulate gyrus works too hard, so they're rigid and flexible, and if things don't go their way, they get upset. So you have that impulsive, compulsive mood instability. And often I have found mood stabilizers to stabilize their temporal lobes can be really helpful. And then either medicine or supplements to increase both serotonin and dopamine um, have been because really these are people helpful. that can be really frustrating. <laughs> so, if you're trying to be in a relationship um, or it's someone in your family, it's it can be pretty frustrating. It can be really painful. Yeah. Um, for people, um, is mental illness a chronic disorder, and can it be cured? <laughs> The end of mental illness. The end of mental illness begins with a revolution yeah. in brain health. So let's talk about your grandmother for a minute because people would say she had a mental illness. And I never I never agreed. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia. No, I wasn't in the she mental She was hospitalized. Yeah, she was hospitalized given electric shock therapy. And it's funny because I grew up with her 20-something years of my life. 
Um, she lived in our house and I wasn't in the medical industry at the time, but then eventually I became a nurse and it never resonated with me. People, people called her schizophrenic and I'm like, I don't see it. She never heard voices. She never acted weird, but she did act. I mean, she never acted like, a, like, like she was schizophrenic. Like she would like walk around, like talking to her. She never did that. So I'm like, I don't understand why they're calling her schizophrenic. Even when I was young, I didn't understand why they said that. She did have issues. Like she, she had, when her blood sugar went low, cause I had to give her her insulin shots. Oh, if her blood sugar went low, she would act crazy. But guess what? That's a sign like of- Like what? Oh, she'd start screaming and like, but that is a sign of low blood sugar. So she would go a little crazy if she if her blood sugar wasn't stabilized. So is that um, a mental illness or is that a brain? That's a medical problem? issue. It's a medical issue. So and then the other the other thing that happened though is she would hibernate in her room and she became a hoarder. And now if you saw this, you might call it a mental illness, but if you knew the backstory, you would not. So she became a hoarder and she would watch TV and cry all day. And so people started to think she was crazy. But if you understood the backstory, you would understand why she did those two so things. So share a little bit of it. So she was um, she was from she was Lebanese, but at the time Greater Syria, and she was born in um, 1910. So in 1915, she went through the Great Famine. So I guess it was 1915, 1918, something like that. But she went through the Great Famine, and when she was a child, and so she would watch the Turks come through with their weapons, and it was it was a terrible time in that country. So it was war torn country, and she was traumatized. Her dad no food. It was the Great Famine, and she they were starving, and so her only um, her only punishment at one point was to kneel on a marble floor all day because she ate a loquat that her was her sister's and they, they had no food and that was the only food they had. But because it was so serious that for eating something when she was hungry, she got punished. And so at one point they had to run, the Turks were coming through town, everybody scattered, everybody ran, she ran up into the mountains, she was five years old and she got lost in the mountains for three days by herself. And so it was freezing cold, The the, the, you know, this is when the like the moisture would turn to frost. And so the um, small amounts, like the little puddles on the ground would freeze and things like that it was freezing cold. And so she was lost for three days by herself and she bent down to drink out of a pond and her hair got in the water and it froze. And so she was terrified the, of the animals, of everything. She's by herself. She finally, someone finds her, takes her back into town and they had to, they had to like shave her head close to her, her hair close to her head. And um, to get it was all matted and, you know, tangled and whatever. And so she was completely traumatized. She never got over that. And then my uncle was murdered <laughs> when she, in a drug deal when I was four. And she never got over that. And when in America, she never learned to speak so the language. So is that a mental illness? Right. She also or had a language barrier. Did she, were there cultural issues? Clearly there's trauma issues. And the, and the hoarding was, she used to tell me, save the old tinfoil, save it. Save, you know, save, you know, save the butter dishes save, because you don't know something's going to happen. Something's going to happen right. sometime. Which is trauma. Right. And trauma is just so common uh, in our society. So is, is it chronic? Can it be cured? You have to know the cause. But I didn't and think of her as crazy. That's why um, I wrote the end of mental illness. We need to see these as brain mm -hmm. health issues. And your brain is an organ, just like your heart is an organ. And your brain often can heal if you put it in a healing environment. We are so grateful for you. Um, if you learned one thing, um, please post it on any of your social media channels like the end of mental illness begins with a revolution in brain health. Also leave us a comment, a question, or a review. If you got a copy of The End of Mental Illness, I'd love if you went on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com and left a review. That helps us so much. Um, and we will see you next time. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. 
For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.